Finding the two koi deposit at Moose River in Nova Scotia and turning it into a mine was a long and sometimes challenging process. Although it took all those years, we had never uh, lost faith that this would be eventually be a mine. Everybody was a believer from day one and stuck with it. The story starts very early in Bruce Hudgens' career with Seabright Resources. I was lucky enough out of school, you know, 24, 25 years old, to be uh, given the project. And step two was um, under Western Mining, they sort of threw the book at this thing for a couple of years. Western Mining shut the project down in 1990. In 1996, Bruce had the opportunity to work on it again with Moose River Resources. But poor market conditions made it hard to raise money, and they were within days of losing the project. So from uh, 96, we raised a half a million dollars locally to do more drilling, follow-up, open intercepts, some good scoping studies, you know, but uh, boom, pre x hit. We optioned it out to a couple of companies before uh, Diamond Ventures, uh, Ron Hawks, Waldy Bucknell's company in 2003. And there were about eight drill holes, long, continuous intersections of gold. And my reaction was, if this were in Australia, it would be gold bars by now. And so that was my introduction, and uh, we went on from there. At the time, I thought, with five years and five million dollars, we could get to the point where we could finance development of a mine. However, it didn't turn out that way. <laughs> it took uh, nearly 15 years and 20 million dollars. Again, they were challenged by rough market conditions and found it hard to raise money. Then one day the phone rang and it was an Australian who headed up a uh, Canadian company uh, looking for a gold project. The other company was Spur Resources, and the executive chairman was Stephen Dean. The companies merged in 2014 and became Atlantic Gold Corporation, which took the project to the next level. We raised the capital and, uh, and, and, and de-risked the project uh, and took it into construction uh, commissioning production. It was a difficult time to look to be developing a gold mine at that time. And what made it possible is what we in Atlantic Gold call our differentiators. Ron and Bruce say a number of people contributed to the eventual success of the project. They also credit the strong support they received from the local community and all levels of government. One of the things we're most proud of as a team is the creation of in excess of 270 direct jobs in the province and in excess of 150 indirect jobs in an area where there were no jobs. This included employment for members of the local Micmac community. Today the mine is a successful low-cost operation with the potential to expand with three other deposits on the property. That success attracted a buyer for the project. In 2019, St. Barbara acquired the company for $800 million. From 2014 to the date of sale of the company, uh, we achieved a 1,129% uh, return over that four and a half year period. That was a really, really big achievement by our team and it's something that we're very proud of. 